Welcome back to the great and awesome outdoors, everybody. We're on the water today. And we're gonna be talking about some springtime fishing. Uh, it, it, sort of. This happens to me every year, and I'm sure it happens to many of you too. We get excited. Springtime is here, you got things blooming, you see a few bugs, you're like, oh man, bugs are hatching. Oh, where's that full moon at? You know, there's blooms on the trees. There's gotta be bass on the beds. Well, what ends up happening? Yes, sometimes the stars align, perfect water conditions, atmospheric conditions. You get out there, there's bass all over beds. It's, it's majestic. But the other 90% of the time, what actually happens? We go out there, we get excited. Ooh, water 61. Oh, where are they? Where, where are the bass? Where are the beds? I don't know. I, I can't figure it out. What is happening is every lake is different and every day and every hour is different in the springtime when you're bass fishing. And in today's video, we are encountering that and I'm going to two different bodies of water to show you guys a couple of different things that are going on in different lakes, different conditions that are leading into the spawn, but not quite there. Before we get out of the water, don't forget to check out brand new, dropping brand new spankies. We got the new spring uh, collection launching at goosequad.com uh, very shortly. We got all new shorts. I know the shorts are very popular. We've sold out of the shorts a couple times now, but we got all new patterns. They're, they're, they're cool. What can I say? They're cool. They're going to be awesome when it warms up a little bit, but you can wear them right now and show how much of a man you are. Also, the only plastic that we will be launching in the early spring is this one. This is the only one left. This is a tube, y'all. This is the tube tube. And you're gonna see me use it here in just a second. But yes, we now have a tube. So almost every plastic you can imagine, almost every hard bait you can imagine, and fly apparel, all at GoogenSquad.com. You can use my code LFG, save at checkout. Now let's get out of the water and let's try to catch some fish in these odd changing conditions we call spring. The first scenario here is a creek. And this is one of the first places you look to go when the, when you see the main lake water temperatures are like high 50s and you've got a sunny day or it's been sunny a couple days. Like, ooh, I'm gonna go try to find a creek because there's gonna be some fish, some early spawners try to sneak in there. I fished around in there for a little bit, actually searching for crappie, but I ended up finding some bass on beds. Here's one of them. White bass running up the creek, just scooting everywhere. Level eight trolling motor, casting a swim jig, POV, Dustin Connell. Hit that bomb button. Just saw one in a nook. A little cranny that I liked. Can't see it anymore at this angle, but it looked like a juicy one. All right, y'all, I gotta do something. Cause I've been waiting to do this for months. I'm sorry, I have to take a pause for drive fishing right now. Because one of my favorite bed fishing baits of all time, three and a half, four inch tube. We are coming out with them. We have a white one. You can use the white one for fishing around bass eating shad or you can bed fish with it, like I'm about to do. A little big. That one's gonna do it right there. It's a three otter. Wah bam. New little Mondo EWG hook. 
somebody needs some weights. Somebody needs to get some weights. Get the little 3 16ths there, bud. Take that dart off. I'm going no bobber stop. I want it free and open. Free and open movements here, okay? Uni knot, wah bam. Snip it. Tube rigging, how do you do it? Go in there. Just like you would a normal Texas rig. All right, that's why you need a wide gap hook, though. They're kind of thick. I actually prefer one size up from here. I'm going to give you guys a little pro tip. Fishing tubes. Take that wide gap hook. Bend it out a little bit. All right, make it even. Make it flush with your tube. Actually, that three out's perfect. Okay. All right. There's a real specific little spot I need to be. I think that's it. Behind the limb. So, so oh, there it is. Yep. Yeah, it's gonna eat it. I'm in the right spot. I'm just behind the limb. Oh, it's been rolling on it. Also, I'm not gonna be able to tell when the fish picks it up. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that's a pretty decent little fish. Not exactly sure why I didn't get that fish. But we'll go give her a whirl again. I did not hook the fish, so should should come back coming back right now just not in the juice the juice spot okay there we go behind the limb again not great for the hook sets but that fish is gonna eat it I'm gonna bring the limb with me That fish should come off with the limb. I'm literally like working the hook out, out of the mouth right now. Come on. I'm just gonna grab you by the back. See that, that limb is just wrapped around. There we go. You would have come off. I would have really yanked on you. That, my friends, is my first bed fish of the year. Hooked in the tongue, unfortunately. So I am going to let it go right away. See ya. The tube is just uh, it's unresistible. It's one of my favorite bed fishing baits of all time. And that actually worked out kind of good that I put it over the limb because I was able to pop it up and down. And when you pop a tube up, I didn't have much water in there to work with, but when you pop a tube up, yeah, I mean, it's just gonna go all sorts of directions and fish hate that. They hate that when they're guarding their beds and then they got this thing, it's so unpredictable, it just darts out. So anyway, put these ridges in it so you can uh, also expose it on the outside not get hooked in the brush so you can flip with it and it's a, it's a nice soft tube got it in a bunch of different sizes coming out including crappie size which we we're getting back to boom first bit fish of the year so on this lake I was pretty much committed to fishing up in a creek all day trying to catch crappie and I ended up catching you know, that bass on a bed got my first bass bed bedding bass and then I ended up hooking about a four pound bass on a crappie jig trying to crappie fish and I, I spent the whole time back in there just scanning brush scanning every lay down trying to find those crappie the crappie were not up in there it's something they didn't like and I think what it comes down to what prevented a full-blown bass spawning explosion back there was the water stability the water 
literally was not in, in there two weeks ago. So this water had just come up and it's, it's kind of still fresh. So I think the number one thing that fish look for on the spawn is water stability. And then it goes to length of day. So how, are the days getting a little longer? They start getting that feeling. And they just need that stable water. So if they start spawning, maybe the water drops and they don't have any water left. Or maybe it comes up 10 feet over the head and they don't have enough sunlight for the eggs. You know, there, there's always that in the springtime. But when it all lines up right, you got stable water, you got, you know, good long day, fish are feeling it, water temperature hits our right, boom, it's happening. But let's go to another scenario at another lake. So this time you got stable water, but you got those colder nights that are coming in. Warmer days, you're getting that 70s in the afternoon, water temps get up to about 60, you're like, oh, phew, phew. gotta go up shallow, gotta, gotta get up there, flip on the bank. But then you get those cold nights, water temperatures dropping, you know, 50, mid 50s, what do you do? So in this instance, backing out to more main lake stuff and I'll show you guys a couple ways that you can catch those fish. All right y'all, next chapter in this weird menagerie video on a completely different lake and the water temperature is a little colder even though this is after, uh, uh, water temperatures are very strange on different lakes and this one is, is chilly. Um, and I've got a fish in the well right now. I just lost a fish on a jerk bait so I think we're gonna pick up some jerk baits and uh, do a little pre-spawn fishing here. I think a pre-spawn bite is forming. On the other lake, there was literally fish cruising up in the shallows, uh, basically getting ready to spawn, were spawning. Uh, again, I was trying to crappie fish, so I just I saw some bass and I got excited and started doing that. But here, it, it's a pre-spawn thing and I, I feel like they're, uh, there is a bite to be had. Sunny day, good water visibility for some jerk baits. Okay, we're gonna pick up this jerk bait. Do a little jerking here on a lead-in bank. So that's the second fish that I've had. Came out here to, to do some crappie fishing. All I found is a little crappie, so I'm picking up a bass stick along the way, which is really how I like to fish. Oh yeah. There she is. Nice little rod. It's warming up down there. 45 degree bank. Come on, Sally. Oh, there's one. Right on that point. It's predictable. Fighting weird. It is a bass though. Not as big as the last one. Barely hooked. There's something something weird where they're not quite eating it well. Maybe a color change is needed. Pretty decent bass for here though. <sighs> nice thing about a jerk bait, even if they think about eating it, they swipe at it, you're gonna snag them somewhere in the head. Nice fish. Tell you what, I haven't let this other fish go yet. So we get a double release. It's just a little bigger where I can't get my hand around it. There we go. A little chunky, a little monkey. Double sniff. Love to see it. Let y'all go. Feisties. Big feisties. Well, I just can't get away. I can't get away from the green ones, y'all. I am trying to go crappie fishing and I end up just seeing little things along the way. I'm like, hey, you know, there's probably a bass there. Oh, yeah. Hey, there's a bass on the bed. Hey. They're just entering my life. I love it, but I'm 
Pretty confused on the crappie, honestly. Make a few rando casts, but really those points are probably what's there's one right there. As I say that, it's a little one. Peanut on the random bank, probably staying away from the big fish on the points. Don't want to get eaten. Tell you what though, there's a little, there's a pre-spawn thing happening here. There is a little pre-spawn thing happening. I like the water clarity. This lake is normally trash. <clears throat> All right, we're going to the other side of the spawning creek. Water's warmed up to 56 and a half, it's looking like. Keep casting on these secondaries here. And the fish have kind of made it obvious that they're not really wanting to push up right now. They're wanting to stick on these points. Which is fine, catch them on the jerk bait. Ooh, God, there's a good one. I mean, that one straight pummeled it. Oh, yeah, coming up. Oh, my gosh, it's a micro. I'm telling you what, if that fish got off, I would have told you. It must be a spotted bass. It is. Had a little extra power on it. Little extra power on it, didn't you? Look at that little pee pee. Little pee pee, buddy. Cream in this dirt bait. This is definitely what they're um, attracted to right now. <clears throat> March. I want to be kind of close to the bank. Just a little deeper water. A little one, I think. Yes, yes, it is. It's confirmed. It's gonna be another spot. The mysterious spotted bass. Look, look how many of these fish are getting it on the outside of the mouth. They're just swiping it. I actually felt him kind of double tap it. Spawning bass or uh, spotted bass are kind of a mystery on their spawn. I, I've really never talked to anyone that's said like, yeah, I've got a. We've got spawning bass or spotted bass on uh, beds. Not really sure what they do. I think they probably spawn pretty deep. Oh, she, oh, she just bit it. I missed her, but she bit it. Just slapped at it. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to that point. See if she uh, bungled up my thing there. Unsuspecting nuggets. What we got here? A little spotted bass again. Boy, they're back in town. Skinny. I need to eat. Not really seen a ton of shad back here, so. Little buddy, skinny. Oh, 
Oh, there he is. Swipey. Mr. Swipey. just about to reel it in and make another cast because it's a large mouth that didn't quite hit the good part of that point these fish are shrinking on me don't want shrinkage good. jerking arm is getting tired started fighting started really fighting hard okay we have hooked a carp or it's 12 pound bass but I believe it's a carp it's massive it's massive Okay, we're gonna have to go chase this thing down. It's going into the pocket here. It's like really a tuna. Wah bam! Those little round bend hooks. Just got them. This thing's twisting on me. Wait, is this a catfish? What we got here? bent get bent son now it's huge carp huge carp in the tail maximum power I'm trying to unhook it I'm trying to shake it out don't do it tire out how bent these hooks are now actually looking looking pretty good pretty good on our scout all right let's try that again wow Even a marina area. I've seen this two days in a row. Trappies are lodged up under the docks. Lodged. I mean, the nastiest places you can't get to. That's where they're sitting right now. I don't know what they're waiting on to move to the bank. The water is 61 right now. You know, it's probably low 50s in the morning. But the, the crappie usually spawn before the bass, so I, I would think it'd be right now, but I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I need to check my logs on where I started seeing crappie up on beds last year, but I saw them this morning out deep, and I just saw them all up under the docks here. Saw them yesterday all up under docks on another lake. So, crappie spawn should be here so shortly, but they were definitely staging up under there where I can't get my lure, dadgummit. Yep. Oh, one last stop. Where are we started? Let's see if there's any more that have moved up since it's got a wee bit toastier. That's not the one. That gummit. That's going to be a little spotisco. A little spotisco. Yep. Pretty fish. Spotted bass. If you guys want to know if you got a spotted bass or not, they got these striations here. Different kind of pattern, but they always have a sticky tongue. You can feel their tongue and it feels like sandpaper. 
That's a confirmed spotted bass. Another good bait for here would just be like a weightless stick bait. Just kind of let that float around. Also important thing to do when you're jerking, when you first throw that bait out there, reel it like a crankbait. Just a second, just to get it to dive down a little bit. Sometimes if you start jerking right as it hits the water, it'll not, it'll kind of spin and do something weird. Reeling it also gets it down there a little quicker. Just a couple cranks, a couple cranks, then start jerking. Gotta give the wrist a break for a second. Oh. Come here, little ding dong. That's the sound. Weightless plastic hitting a calm water. Oh no, we come off. Ooh, drag was a little loose there. A little loosey goosey, that one thumped it good. Oh my god, I had another one. Oh, the worm got Oh. Oh, that's probably what happened both times. Worm got all boogered up. Dead gummit. There we go. The wacky. The wacky. Oh, was that? Ooh, that's a good spotted bass. Wow. That is a chunker. Dang. Look at that. Right in the snout. Dunk. That is a nice spotted bass. Very healthy. Don't get big. He had some girth, though. that big mama though I'll, I'll settle for that it's a good fish I know there's a chunky bud in here somewhere chunky bud wants the log or that jerk bait there's just no wind right here just on this lead in bank got pretty deep water behind me I'm actually on 20 foot right now I think these fish are just coming off the bottom, looking up, seeing that stuff. Going in, they've got to go. They've got to get it. They got to get it in their face. There's one. Oh my gosh. You serious right now? What happened on that one? What the deuce? Hook looks great. having some clubs here clubs or these are just little spotties they got small mouths large mouths just gonna be a dunk or I'm not even gonna feel it oh, oh had one got it that yeah, feels like a better one too. That's the one. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a big large we wanted. 
Okay, had to do a battery change while fighting the fish. Let's go ahead and smash that like button for that. And that is the juicy largemouth we wanted right there. He sucked it in. I felt that thump. And boom, baby. That's our uh, wacky finesse hook right there. I was telling you guys about a few videos ago. It's perfect for that lunker lock. Look at that fish. That's awesome. That is awesome. I'm gonna sniff you so much. Yeah. Beautiful largemouth bass. Right where he should have been. On the log. Got to love it, baby. Quick sniff and we'll let it go. see it. I love you. I love you so much. Tickle. That's how we're going in the day, y'all. Fishing freaks, it goes without saying, but you got to have a log ready at all times. So the wind had just calmed down. The jerkbait bite kind of faded off. Still catch them a little bit. But if you are finding yourself on a lake and you are not getting into fish where you think you should like oh man they should be up in here spawn and it's like 60 degrees 61 degrees uh just go back out a little bit and fish the closest good piece of cover structure that's going into that area and oftentimes that's where you're going to find some fish and usually a big bass too that's that's where the big females like to hang out they only go up there for a little bit you know just just a day or two and then they are out to their comfort zone what an aquatic adventure we went on today y'all a couple different bodies of water getting some different looks catching some fish weird fish too oddities catch them all don't care I've been hitting the water a lot here lately, y'all. Um, I don't feel like I'm super in tune with the water, but I'm, I, I'm, I've got the bug so bad right now to go bass fishing and any kind of fishing. Uh, if if it's just, if I see there's like no wind in the morning, I just get excited. I'm like, I gotta go somewhere. I gotta go. I start just geeking out. I hope you guys are the same way. Uh, but <laughs> thank you for tuning in today. Uh, again, if you want to go to googlesquad.com, shop any of the new stuff or any of the great old stuff, you can use my code LFG. Save it at, uh, save at the checkout section over there with your shopping cart. All right? Thank you, guys. Smash that like button for outdoor greatness, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Yeah, buddy. Ooh, yeah. Smooth as glass. Time we put the silver bullet into high gear. Got our full break in. Let's see how fast she'll go.